Here we're going to be looking at the capitalization criteria to determine the type of lease that we'd be using for these various lease transactions. And we're going to look at it in terms of a decision diagram here. First we're going to look at these diagrams and then we're going to better go and define these test criteria. So first we're going to start here with the lessee, but before we start that we're going to have these, uh, this diagram here where we're going to have these test criteria and either it meets the test criteria, which would be a yes, or it doesn't meet the test criteria, it would be a no when you proceed on. And so first let's look at it from the lessee's perspective here to record a capital lease. It must be non cancelable first off, and it has to meet one or more of the four criteria that we're going to look, look at here. Otherwise, it would be classified here as an operating lease. So we have either, uh, for the lessee, we're going to either uh, record it as a capital lease here or an operating lease. So first, let's go and look at the lessee's criteria here. So number one here, the number one test here, does is it the uh, lease here, or does the asset transferred or we have a transfer of ownership here with this lease here. If it is yes, then we go down here and we record it as a capital lease. If it's no, then we just proceed on here to our next test. In this case, it would be the bargain purchase option. Uh, if it has a bargain purchase option, yes, it's a capital lease. If not, no, we proceed on to our next or our third test here, which is the lease term. Is it greater than or equal to 75% here of the economic life of this asset? Yes. It would be a capital lease, no, we just proceed on to our next test here. And that would be for the present value of the payments. Are they greater than or equal to 90% here of the fair value of this asset? If yes, it's a capital lease. If not, it be no here and it becomes an operating lease. So through our uh, test criteria here, which we had um, four different tests here, we either determine if it was an operating lease or it was a capital lease. Now let's move over here to our lesser. Now the lesser, they can classify the lease based on, on the criteria that we're going to look at here, either as one, an operating lease, two, as a direct financing lease, or three, as a sales type lease. So again, we have the same decision diagram here. Yes, if it's a yes, we proceed on to the next step here. If it's a no, we proceed on to determine the lease type here in this case. So in this case, with the lesser, there is four different... We look at the criteria here. Does it meet any of the lessee's criteria? Now, that's the first thing we have to decide here. And we have to we'll go back here to our lessee. And does it have a transfer of ownership, a bargain purchase option, or the lease term greater than 75% of the economic life, or is the present value of the payments greater than 90% of the fair value? So we, we use the same uh, group of criteria that we did for the lessee here, but that's our first decision criteria. If it meets one or more of those criteria, uh, then we would proceed on here to the next criteria. Now, uh, if it didn't, in this case, if it didn't meet any of those criteria here, it'd be a no, then we'd be automatically here an operating lease. But if it met any, any one or four of those criteria that we had listed here for the lessee, then we would move on to two more tests here. So we have this first group of tests that we have to make for those criteria one through four, and then we have two additional tests that we have to make here. So let's first look at the first test here. Uh, is the collectability of the lease payments reasonably certain? Uh, if no, we would proceed on here and it would be recorded as an operating lease. If yes, we move on to our next uh, test criteria here. And that would be, is the lessor's performance substantially complete? Now, what we mean by that, there would be no uncertainties on the cost to be incurred by the lessor and on this lease in the future here. So um, if it was uh, yes, we would proceed on here to our, our next decision block here. If no, it would go on be recorded here as an operating lease. So let's say it was a yes decision here. So then the next thing we have to decide here, does the assets fair value equal the lesser's book value here? If yes, it becomes a direct financing lease. If no, it becomes a sales type lease here. So in this decision criteria here, we actually had these four criteria here that we had to decide based on the lessee's criteria. And then we had these two additional tests here on its collectability here of the payments and also the performance if it's substantially complete. Now you can see here, this is where we would made decision here for the lessor if either it's an operating lease here, a sales type lease here, 
or a direct financing lease. Now let's better define here the test criteria and we're going to be looking at it here for the lessees criteria here. First we'd we'll be looking at here the transfer of ownership and then this bargain purchase option here and then where the lease term is greater than or equal to 75 percent of the economic life here of the asset and then where the present value of the payments here are greater than or equal to 90 percent here of the fair value. So first let's go up here and look at the uh, number one here, the transfer of the ownership test. That's where the lease transfers ownership of the asset to the lessee here. Number two for the bargain purchase option test here, that allows the lessee to purchase the lease property for a price significantly lower than the property's estimated fair value at the date the option becomes exercisable here. In number three here for the economic life or that 75% test here, that's if the least, the least period here equals or exceeds 75% of the asset's economic life. The lesser transfers most of the risks and rewards of ownership here to the lessee. And number four here, recovery of the investment or that 90% test here. So if the present value of the minimum lease payments equals or exceeds 90% here of the fair market value of the assets, so we're testing for that here. Now remember here, the minimum lease payments in this case include number one, the rental payments here, excluding any executory costs. Number two, a bargain purchase option, if any, a guaranteed residual value, if any, and a penalty for failure of uh, renewal of the lease, if any, here. So we've just gone over here, uh, better defined here, uh, the um, test criteria here we'd have for the lessee. Now let's better define the test criteria here for the lessor. And first off, does the lease meet any of the lessee's criteria here? So the lessor has to meet any of the uh, criteria here that we just discussed here for the lessee. That Those would be that number one through four criteria. And then there's two additional criteria here. Is the collectability of the lease payments reasonably certain? And number two here, is the lessor's performance performance substantially complete here. So first for collectability. Uh, the collectability of the payments required from the lessee is reasonably predictable and certain. And number two here for the lessor's performance, there would be no uncertainties on the cost to be incurred by the lessor here. And to uh, expand on that, uh, no important uncertainties surrounded uh, surround the amount of the unreimbursable costs yet to be incurred by the lesser under the lease here. So the lesser's performance is substantial, substantially complete or future costs are reasonably predictable. So that uh, expands our uh, lease or our criteria definitions here for the lesser.